Ahmad. Before I enter into my mother's womb, I know who I am. In my vision, total world is my own home. Your hearts are so pure and blemishless. You are already in the path of truth. Continue your eternal journey. And Amma, special blessings for you. Uh, whenever you say Ah, before Ma, I will be with you in your heart. <laughs> I will do whatever you wish. I will help you that. Whenever we say ah before ma, you are already with us. Yes. I refer to you as others as being a living saint. And people ask me, does Amma know our thoughts? Yes. Does Amma know our future? Yes. And when your children are sick, when they're physically ill or mentally ill and they come to you, do you have the capacity and the choice to heal them or not to heal them? Yes, I have the capacity to heal them. I want to bring more dharma, peace, universal peace in this world. So that's why I just took only this body for all of your sake. With when love. you do every day a little bit meditation, our meditation, hour and a half time meditation, an hour and a half time? Hour and a half time. <laughs> That's a little bit. That's a lot. <laughs> it's not a lot. <laughs> yes, nobody loves Baba. There is no beginning, there is no middle, there is no end for Baba. If you have the connection, inner connection in your heart, you are able to talk all the time with Baba, experience Baba. Uh, there is no separation between child or son towards Baba. You have to communicate through your heart. Did you ever have the opportunity to, to meet Sai Baba when he was in his physical form? Baba came to our home when we were a, a small child. Did he? He came to Venkatagiri Raja home and he came to our home when my father was alive. Were you a small child? or Very small baby. <laughs> and did you recognize each other? Yes. That you were avatars, yes. that you were kindred yes. souls, that you were the same divine entity? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Prayer means not asking anything. Not asking Prayer anything. means just loving God. So that's why last before year I told to people, don't go to Baba to ask again for marriage, for job and go this is a gratitude year. <laughs> don't ask anything. Gratitude. Krutam Smaraha, what Baba did for the world, have gratitude, don't ask all the time. Be grateful. Yeah, so that's good. So asking is not prayer. Are there many avatars walking among us today in this world? Are there just a few or are there many avatars? <laughs> <laughs> is that a silly question? <laughs> Avatars get angry on me. Avatars get angry at you yeah. when you talk about them? Yes. Oh, maybe they're not listening right now. <laughs> Amma's essence is love and serve. I love you so much. Give your selfless service to the mankind without expecting even thanks also from anybody. I love you so much, babies. <laughs> Ama Shri Karunamai. Revered in India as an avatar, as an embodiment of divine motherly love, this is Ama Shri Karunamai's visit to Ohio in June 2011, where she talked extensively about the changing world and about the life in Mahasamadhi of Sri Satya Sai Baba. Welcome to Soul Journeys. This interview took place in Cleveland, Ohio, on June 1st, 2011. Peace to the world! 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 Amma, thank you very much once again for gracing us with your visit here in Cleveland, Ohio. We are so happy to see you here year after year now, and we look forward to your fourth visit next year. 
why do you come to America? Why is this country so important to you? Thank you so much, Sun for your love and all the Cleveland babies love. In my vision, total world is my own home. So, so that's why every year I was traveling all over the world, Australia, Japan, uh, London, Italy, some other countries. Uh, so I love to see all of my children to share their pain. So that's why um, I am here all these years. You have blessed me personally by allowing me to introduce you four times, for which I am very grateful. I know I am enormously blessed. I always struggle to make sure I introduce you correctly to people who are new. I describe you as an avatar. How would you wish to have avatar explain to people who are brand new to that word and to you? Actually, before my birth, I know who I am, who I am, what is my work, what is the purpose of my physical existence in this world. I want to bring more dharma, peace, universal peace in this world. So that's why I just took only this body for all of your sake. Before your birth you knew who you were. How long was it after your birth that you knew who you were? Did you have to wait until you were a young woman or did you know as a child? Before I entered into my mother's womb, I know who I am. So does that mean that from the time you were born, you were also conscious of your own divinity? Yes. That's beautiful. I refer to you as others as being a living saint. And people ask me, does Amma know our thoughts? Yes. Does Amma know our future? Yes. Does Amma know when she's supposed to guide us and when she's not supposed to guide us because of the factor called karma? In other words, talk to us a little bit about when you feel it's your duty to guide us to do something we're not doing. Yes. I know my responsibility, how to love my children, how to guide them towards dharma. So because this is the age of darkness, Kali Yuga. Most of the children are just merged in Ines only. So they have to wake up from that dark forces of Ines to experience they are eternal, they are supreme. So that's why if they had that spiritual inclination in their hearts, I really took the responsibility of innumerable children and I fulfilled my work towards those people. And when your children are sick, when they're physically ill or mentally ill and they come to you, do you have the capacity and the choice to heal them or not to heal them? Yes, I have the capacity to heal them. And when you choose to do it, is it because their karma allows for it or are there other reasons? Sometimes a um, lot of mountains and mountains of karma shouldering on children's life. So, a lot of karma was um, burned with the spiritual grace and I took the children's responsibility. I healed sometimes um, because of their uh, love and total trust on me. And this is a hypothetical question. When people see Amma and they're sick and they ask for your blessing and they ask for your healing, sometimes maybe they feel disappointed if they're not healed. How should they think about that? How should they think about um, your blessings and whether or not you choose to heal them? They, are, they have no receptor in their hearts to experience that. They need a little bit of spiritual consciousness then only with that receptor they are able to understand. Otherwise, it is impossible for them. So people really have to continually work on opening their hearts 
And it's easier said than done, because many people, of course, think they're opening their hearts by praying, by entertaining good thoughts, and by good doing good deeds, but still their hearts can be closed? Closed. So how can we best open our hearts? Grace. Only grace. And how do we merit the grace? How do we receive that grace? Just love. Only love. Through love, then grace comes to them. And I'm so glad you're talking about this because I think of love as being one of the world's most misunderstood words. Describe love as you mean it. You don't mean love as you love your children or your parents, or you love your wife, or you love your new house. You mean it in a different way? Yes. I spoke about the love is not the uh, limited love, what people are experiencing in the world. I spoke about the cosmic love. It is the divine, absolute. There is no words about experience that love. So that kind of love, a atom of love is enough. If the true love comes in their hearts, they get that receptor to experience all the time is Amma with them, them and um, they are experienced that, how they are protected from spiritual and innumerable levels from Mother. I invited a unity minister to see you for the first time three nights ago. He was thrilled to be there. He had a very, very good experience. He tells me that in his view, love can be defined when a person has great humility, great compassion, and they have a very tiny ego. He equates all of that with love. Is, is that an acceptable explanation for love? What he told in his view is correct, but in my view it is different. Love is boundless and love is cosmic consciousness. Love is beyond explanation. How do we... There is no egoism in love. There is no identification in cosmic love. The cosmos is big. How do I take my little mind and expand it to have cosmic consciousness with when love? When you do every day a little bit meditation, our meditation, hour and a half time meditation, an hour and a half time? Hour and a half time. <laughs> That's a little bit? That's a lot. <laughs> it's not a lot. A <laughs> lot of children all over the country, they are doing all over the world, innumerable thousands and millions of people every day doing meditation, at least hour and a half, two hours also some children doing. So their mind will become quite calm and uh, they are climbing the higher orbits of the spiritual consciousness from body level to mind level from mind level to intellectual level, finally they attain their self and they're experiencing this absolute cosmic love and this all pervasiveness of this uh, supreme truth. So that's why meditation is very important. I saw in your videos that you showed here in Cleveland, Ohio, videos of students at schools, at your schools, practicing meditation before they start their day. And you believe that that really helps them set the path? For uh, yes, I believe that because medita because of meditation only, they are doing very well. They got very high score marks, 100%, 99% because of more focusing, more concentration and intellectual blossom comes from meditation. That is for students, but spiritual uh, seekers they elevated so much day by day in meditation, so much calmness, quietness, inner peace, inner joy, all this um, humility, kindness, compassion, uh, infinite joy enter into their hearts by practicing meditation. Ma'ama, I can tell you from first-hand experience that many of us practice, 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 but we don't accomplish much because of our busy minds, our monkey minds, and it's very frustrating we sometimes give up on it because it doesn't seem to work for us. What can we do to make it unfold like a blossom, like a, a lotus blossom in our mind's meditation? So, uh, last year also we discussed about this point. Uh, there are four types of yogas, bhakti yoga, devotion, a lot of shakti in bhakti. If you practice bhakti also, you attain that highest level of 
purity, consciousness in the life. If you do every day selfless services without anticipation anything from the society, even thanks also. So that is also going to take you to the highest level of the uh, purity and they will experience the divine consciousness in all living beings including within themselves. And meditation, it is a practice and self enquiry who I am through the path of knowledge. So all these are same. Meditation is a little bit easy than uh, because mingling with the people sometimes the inus is rising in karma yoga in some of these things. In meditation gradually the layers and layers and layers of inus is totally burnt in meditation. But in, in this all these yogas also same thing happened they will attain absolute peace and eternal joy in spiritual life. I have different questions from various people this year rather than just my questions and, and one of uh, the people here wants to know a little bit more about avatars. Uh, you're so kind to tell us about your divine nature as an avatar. The question is, are there many avatars walking among us today in this world? Are there just a few or are there many avatars? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a silly question? <laughs> Avatars get angry on me. Avatars get angry at you? Yeah. When you talk about them? Yes. Oh, maybe they're not listening right now. <laughs> uh, maybe it would be better to ask it from this perspective. Since Obviously, there must be other avatars <laughs> here. Do they have different jobs, different work assignments that they perform? Yes, maybe different works. Different levels of work. Yes. Different, different acts that they perform. Yes. And how would you characterize, I think I know your work is love, 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 love. What else are you doing in addition to teaching people how to love more? And really people love God, they are able to love everybody, God is love. They are able to see God in every living things, every living beings. So that's why love and serve. If they love themselves or God, they are able to love any living being also. So love is not able to limit it only towards that uh, deity or murti or a form or God is all pervading. All this creation is only the absolute creation, comes from absolute self, from myself. So if we really anybody love God, I am sure they are going to love total creation. This creation is nothing but mother's house. All living beings are nothing but my supreme forms. Interesting. I haven't heard it explained that way before. There is a question since many times these videos are viewed by people on certain spiritual paths. The question is to have you actually to give you thanks for your kind and generous words about those of us who have been traditional followers of Sri Satya Sai Baba who took his Maha Samadhi just about a month and a half ago on Easter Sunday morning, 2011. The world lost an avatar, but I think I heard you say correctly the other night that nobody lost Baba. Would you say more about that? Yes, nobody lost Baba. There is no beginning, there is no middle, there is no end for Baba. So how can God die? It is impossible. So. Uh, children are more attached with the physical existence of Baba, so that's why they think Baba uh, is entered into Mahasamadhi. Uh, if you have the connection, inner connection in your heart, you are able to talk all the time with Baba, experience Baba. Uh, there is no separation between child or son towards Baba. You have to communicate through your heart. 
I know your ashrams are both in Andhra Pradesh, the state in southern central India. Did you ever have the opportunity to, to meet Sai Baba when he was in his physical form? Baba came to our home when we were a, a small child. Did he? He came to Venkatagiri Raja home and he came to our home when my father was alive. Yes. How beautiful. And so you know that he's with us today. Yes. And if you were to take your Mahasamadhi, it doesn't mean that you would be leaving us at all. You would always be with us. See, it's very hard for many of us to relate to because we're not from that tradition that's aware of... Yes. Where can I go? <laughs> Where can you go? Is your message different from Baba's at all? Nothing. Same. It's about love. love. So... Love, love this world like your Supreme Son. Entire creation comes from God. So love every living being like God. Very simple. And so the mankind, our creation, animals, birds, Mother Earth, everything with love and responsibility. But God created us with a full range of human complex emotions, including anger and envy and jealousy. Where can we find room for love when the human emotion of anger or jealousy or envy is forcing it out? How do people make room for the love that you're talking about? When people have an atom of true devotion in their hearts, there is no place of these this hard things in their heart. They can't see all of these smaller things in other people's heart and they just love them, uh, including with these uh, little things also. These are smaller things, anger and all those things are common in human life. Uh, love never see any of these things. Love just like a pouring love. How the moonlight in the full moon time? The moonlight is just pouring the moonlight on all the creation. Mm -hmm. So a little atom of your devotion is enough to serve the people around you. So love is the key for all of us to remember. Yes. No matter what human emotion you're yeah, experiencing. Yeah, they are emotional. The so okay, forgive them. Mm -hmm. Love can forgive anything. Jody wants to know how old you were when Baba came to your home to see you. Were you a small child or? Very small baby. <laughs> and did you recognize each other? Yes. That you were avatars? Yes. That you were kindred yes. souls? That you were the same divine entity? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you talk ever about meeting other avatars? Yeah, physically, not physically, but... Uh -huh. I think that's so reassuring for so many people because God's always with us. We're taught that since we're young, young children. But when we have the great privilege, the great boon, as they say in India, to come face to face with a living avatar, it changes everything. And when we lose one, the physical form, we feel this emptiness. But your message is not to worry. There is no emptiness there. Yes, absolutely. You never miss anything. You never miss Baba at all. One more question about when you came into your mother's womb. I heard you say this the other night in Cleveland. You knew your purpose, just as you said a short time ago. Why did you choose to incarnate at this particular time? This is the right time. Kali Yuga. People need love. People are in so deep depressions, pain, sorrow. They are totally merged in this materialistic maya. They need upliftment. So uh, we can't, uh, in the other ages, all the demons, everything was killed by gods and goddesses. This is not. We have to uplift dharma. We have to kill the egoism. So not the physical killing. And that's the hardest factor to kill. Very, very hard work right now. And when your followers call upon you, do you hear their call no matter where they're calling from? Yes. 
and you're able to keep it all straight if five million people are calling you at the same time because of their distress? No stress. <laughs> no stress. And I would imagine that many people call you at the same time all over the world. And for the handful of us who are able to be with you because we choose to be with you, it's a wonderful feeling to be in your physical presence. But I think if I'm hearing you correctly, there's no difference from being in your physical presence or being in your spiritual presence on a heart-to-heart -heart connection. No difference. So we should cultivate that heart-to-heart -heart connection. Yes. That's more closer. Immediately we'll get response mm -hmm. if you call from your heart. And what is it that you're seeing in your followers and people as you visit communities around the world more? I think this is a very, very huge undertaking you're on now. You're on a tour of more than 30, 32 American cities. It's got to be, number one, very exhausting, but number two, very rewarding to see the loving faces of those who are interested in coming closer to God? Are you seeing that more, or is it pretty much the same from year to year? They're closer, more and more closer inside. A lot of people are sages here, real sages, real seekers, elevated souls. Maybe they don't even know they're sages. They know. Well, they do know. Yes. <laughs> Some people know. Uh -huh. They're very desireless, so pure very blemishless people, very transient people. So they have no desires, so pure, just they're asking for liberation, salvation. One person asked about your talk on meditation that you suggest people get up at four o'clock in the morning to meditate, and you're saying to meditate for a little bit longer than 20 minutes. Uh, why so early? Nine planets are all the time influencing on human brain scientifically. Mm -hmm. So early hours of the day, the nine planets and 27 stars are influenced is not much on human brain. So that is the very auspicious time. Cosmic energy is working more at that time. When they wake up and meditate, their mind is so peaceful, quiet, calm, serene, and v they get very balanced life. So that's why uh, ancient time onwards, uh, this is the best time to recommend for spiritual seekers. Not all the people don't love to do meditation. If really they have intense thirst towards meditation, that is the appropriate time to do meditation, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And is it permissible for people to wake up at 4 o'clock to meditate and then go back to sleep if they still need more sleep? Uh, it is again Thomas, you know, Thomas signature comes, sleeping is Thomas signature. So they have to do yoga snas, pranayama practice, uh, one and a half hour meditation. What are people are doing in this country? And the pranayama, the breathing, I think I heard you say maybe five minutes before you start your uh, meditation to practice pranayama breathing technique. Uh, before pranayama, before meditation. About five minutes, did you say? Yes, five to ten minutes they have to do pranayama. Okay. Uh, how can we best tune in to, the word is a wavelength, how can we best tune in to ama in our hearts and in our minds to be close to your love? Uh, guidance. Pardon me? Guidance. Kind, guidance. To accept your guidance, we all seek it, of course. Everybody I know wants to feel that they're being guided more and more in a way that they're aware of, in a way that they're conscious of. I know guidance is always there, but we don't always catch it because we're not attuned to it. How can we best attune ourselves to your guidance? If you come one foot towards me, <laughs> I will come thousands of foot towards you. <laughs> yes. So it's, it's just a matter of cultivating a practice of asking love. for guidance. Yes, love. And to remember love. love. True love. And to stay in meditation yes. consistently. Even if we don't think we're doing it correctly, to do it anyway. Mother will correct you. Mother will guide you. Mother will guide us. Yeah. Here's some questions from the people who would like to know. There is so much destruction and devastation and suffering and pain in the world right now. What can we do to keep centered in the midst of it all? We hear it on the news every day. 
uh, meditation is the best medication for this. Mm -hmm. Let all the people in one minute, one time, all the people the same time, the morning time, according to their uh, state's time, they have to do meditation. Your thoughts are traveling in the atmosphere and uh, all the negativity will be controlled by your meditation power. So our meditation has power. We can mm -hmm. actually influence the outcome of global events yes. and maybe depression in other people and anger. We can work by meditating. We can have a positive <laughs> impact on other people's negative. Yes. Your meditation power will subside other people's uh, negativity also and anger also and discontentment and de depression also. That's the power of meditation. Meditation is very powerful, no? Well, it is when we hear you describe it that way. So many people are suffering, says one person here, as we all know financially these days, to keep afloat in the world, just to have the basics, food on the table, electricity in the house. I know you always talk about meditation, but for the most part, they are so anxious, so fearful of their circumstances, it's difficult for them to medicate, meditate. How can you tell, how can you advise people who are very nervous and worried to settle down enough so that they can meditate? If you don't like to meditate, just they have to have a little bit of focusing in their faith, so it doesn't matter whatever they believe. Uh, they will get more focusing in their life. It will help them to do good businesses, good work. In all walks of their life, they will get success. And this depression is never going to come to them. When they do little prayers and meditations, helps them so much. Even prayer in their faith also they can do. Mm -hmm. All faiths lead to the same ultimate goal of divine. This reminds me of a question since you mentioned prayer. You are an avatar. You are a goddess. You are the divine. Do avatars pray? Do avatars need to meditate? No need of all those things. Just only for your sake. To like a model. So that's, so that's why we are undergoing all these things. For our benefit. Only for your benefit. One person says, I see people who come to you who are visibly affected by your presence. They walk away with tears running down their cheeks and their hearts are welling. That does not happen to this person. Is this person doing something wrong? Maybe a lot of um, load of mountains of karma. Mountains of karma. So we can't expect it to go away overnight. We have to keep working at reducing Gradually, the Gradually, day by day, it is going to reduce. It, in the program in Cleveland and elsewhere, you say that we are the Atma, Jesus, and Brahman. Intellectually, a person who understands that it sounds so beautiful, but when thoughts of fear and doubt and uncertainty or the difficulties of life come, the idea of being Atma or Jesus or Brahman quickly flee from the mind. How do we really know our true nature? Again, people have to climb higher orbits of spirituality. So, in the lower level of the body consciousness, it is impossible to understand uh, everything is Brahman, everything is God, everything is consciousness in the human level. So, they have to rise towards highest level of spiritual consciousness. So, we have to continue to stay in spiritual school, to continue to learn, to attend retreats, to meditate, to read books. In Kali Yuga, very easy, in other ages, uh, thousands of years meditations. In this age, uh, less prayers and less meditation uh, takes them towards highest levels. Less prayers and less meditation? Yes, you have to do, but it must be, comes from the inner depths of your hearts. What about study circles, spiritual study circles? Are it's good, valuable? it's called Swadhyaya. It helps so much. Uh, uh, some way it is helps us. And, but to experience more the cosmic consciousness level, more depth we need. 
Many of these questions are on the same theme, so allow me to continue even though it's on negative characteristics. You say the guru is always around you, the guru is always around us, but why do we so often suffer the dark night of the soul? Is it because of those mountains of karma that you mentioned before? Nothing, kar nothing but karma only. And the best way to get rid of karma is to love? Yes. Our own suffering is hard to deal with, but watching loved ones suffer is even harder to endure when we have children or a spouse or a neighbor. How can we be supportive but not talking be drawn about, into uh, their ta uh, karma? Uh, talking about karma, don't think about only our people around us. Think about people who did very, very negative things in the world, killing people, doing so many disasters and lot of things and this is the load of karma carrying by the soul lifetimes. So that's that karmas are obstructing to go closer to the divinity. As a small child, this person writes, she, he felt a spiritual connection but then it went away. They would pray, they would meditate, they would chant and read and study spiritual materials every day. They've been vegetarian for many, many years. They try to eat and live a clean life, and yet they do not feel a strong spiritual connection. It feels like they're going through the motions, but something is missing. What can you tell them to encourage them to continue they on They need that? a little bit proper guidance. Proper guidance. So to always ask inwardly for guidance? Yes. So if proper guidance they get, easy to travel. So without knowing where to go, what to do, people are going to walk there around there itself. Mm -hmm. So if they have the proper guidance, I'm sure uh, they are not stuck in that little points. And about that, if I hear you correctly, because there are many people just like me who ask for guidance, and I feel I'm guided, but I don't always hear the guidance. I don't know, it doesn't come to me the way I want it to come to me. I want it to come as a clear sentence into my left ear. <laughs> Do this this way. And that never happens. Uh, not like that, Tedson. Uh, inspiration comes in the heart. So everything comes inside through the intuition. Through the intuition. Yes, that is the proper word. It's not comes and whisper in the ears. It's, it is the intuition working through the heart. Do this. Don't do this, don't do that. So that's why they need receptor insight. And the trust, to learn to trust your intuition. Yes. And while we're talking, it reminds me of a word you used the other day in Cleveland about living at the level you call equanimity. Can you explain what equanimity is? Equanimity is a very highest level of spiritual consciousness. Are there many people in this world living in equanimity? Some people, not all. And not what, all. What is it? It is the state of samasthiti, total balanced mind. In pain, in problem, in happiness, in sorrow, anything is not affected and influence on them. They are always in the state of uh, inner consciousness level. So very, some people only had that um, experience of the equanimity, but not for all. But that's the greatest state to experience that. So it's a real goal to set for ourselves. Yes, that's the goal. And it's where nothing affects you from the negative world. Never. Uh, another question from somebody about Sai Baba. Many were shocked when Sai Baba died because he said he was going to live until he was 96. Can you help us understand why his body died at 85 instead of 96? Suppose if you want to go uh, day after tomorrow to a tour, mm -hmm. you change your mind, you are going today itself, you have the right to go like that, no? Mm -hmm. A avatar is also change his mind, <laughs> he want to go soon. Do you ever change your mind? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Also, he is supposed to come again in eight years as Prima Sai Baba. Can you tell us anything about that? Are you, 
Are you coming back again? He, he says he's coming back again as Prima Sai. Innumerable times I was here and going back, comes back like so that. So this isn't your first time here? Not only this first time, I came in so many times. <laughs> well, that's good to know. I'm glad this person asked this question because it's very, it stands to reason then that Sai Baba would return. And so Baba told us we have to wait for Sai Baba, mm -hmm. Prem Sai Avatar. Prima Sai Avatar. Yes, we have to wait. Yeah. And who are you coming back as the next time you come back? I can't tell right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and why are avatars, or is it just my misunderstanding, only Indian? Are there avatars in this world who are not Indian? It's not that. <laughs> Total world is God sold only. Innumerable, uh, uh, all the planets in the cosmos is absolutely belong to the Supreme Truth. So... That's a very um, sacred land and so that's why incarnations mm -hmm. bond there. Yeah. And it doesn't matter wherever they may be, all the children belong to them. What will be different in the new age of Aquarius from the old age? What is our question? I can't I'm not quite sure what they mean. Uh, such a yuga. Satya Yuga? Yes. Okay. Satya Yuga, Kali Yuga, there is a... Actually, if people born in Satya Yuga, they have not the mind towards spirituality, it's, they are not in Satya Yuga. People who born in this age, in the Kali Yuga, they are so pure and blemishless inside, it doesn't matter. When they are born in this Kali Yuga also, they are in Satya Yuga. Mm, okay. Okay, did you got my point? I got your point. Yes. So you are in Satya Yuga. <laughs> okay. Jodi in Satya Yuga. <laughs> Bob's and Mary's in Satya Yuga. Because you never tell lies, you never seeking for... Oh, wait a minute now. I've told a few lies in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's natural for human life now, but not... Can't, you don't like to deceive people, no? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm, yeah. I'm kidding today, but when I was younger, I think I probably made a couple of mistakes like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, but one time you never deceived anybody, no? No. So that's why people, if they are good and pure inside and good hearts, helping nature, thinking about God, praying God, they are in Satya Yuga. That's nice. It doesn't matter. When you're born in any age also, it depends upon the attitude of the people's heart. So, so many people in Kali Yuga, they are with a good attitude of spirituality and truthful life. So, so that's why they are in Satya Yuga. It reminds me of what people would talk about when they say, let's prepare for the coming of the Golden Age. The way I look at it, the Golden Age is already here. For those people Absolutely who correct. already what is, know the spiritual yes. path they're on, it's here, it's now. Yes, yes. We don't wait for it to come. Yes, absolutely yeah. correct. And um, it ties into this last question that I was prepared that somebody gave me. I'll just say it because maybe there's something else you'd like to ask about it. And, and I'm putting other people here on notice to just give me their other questions or to even speak them, to come over here and speak them into the microphone. But you said at the program the other day that our strong connection with God doesn't happen for us yet because we are not ready. How can we prepare ourselves to be ready? But then you just said that when we're aware of our spiritual interest and our, and our desire to connect with God, that seems to be all you're saying that we need to do. We're already on the path. Prayer, faith spiritual any practices it doesn't matter any faith also any faith also anywhere in any country they need to pray a little bit mm -hmm. they have to pray they have to go a little bit inside inside and there's, there's a, a book I've studied for many years where it says many good things about prayer but it says one of the best prayers is not to change a person's karma by asking God to maybe help them get a new job or help them to become less depressed. But instead of praying for the outcome, just to send them love 
Do you understand what I'm saying? I I understand what you are A, talking. And does that have value? Prayer is not asking. Prayer is not asking. Prayer is just loving God. Prayer is not asking. In Sanatana Dharma, prayer means just love towards God. Only an atom of love, a true love, true faith, just love towards God. So that is the prayer what we are and, talking. And as you said maybe 20 minutes ago, that prayer or that meditation can help change the outcome in other people's lives. Yes. So if we have a child who's unemployed or depressed or filled with anger... You need not ask anything, God. You need not ask really anything, God. We don't God. pray for the intention that they find a job or, be, or become healthy of their mind. We just love. We just... Just love God. Just love Everything God. Everything is automatically going smooth in the life. So that's a wonderful definition of prayer that people that don't That is the think prayer. Of. Yeah. Sanatan Dharma mentioned that is the prayer. Prayer means not asking anything. Not asking Prayer anything. means just loving God. So that's why last before year I told to people, don't go to Baba to ask again for marriage, for job and go. This is a gratitude year. People told I'm going to uh, this year for birthday for Baba. Okay, go. Just go. Go for love. Mm -hmm. Just to go and be there and see there and what is going there. Love, come back. <laughs> Don't ask anything. Gratitude. Krutam smaraha. What Baba did for the world, have gratitude. Don't ask all the time. Be grateful. Yeah. So that's good. So asking is not prayer. But surely people come to you, Amma, and ask for favors, ask for marriage partners. That's natural. Yeah. Innocently asking. Yeah. And you innocently bless them. I, in, I love them so <laughs> much. They have asked, no problem, but uh, no need to ask. No need to ask. Amma, you are able to give us a jump start in spiritual progress. What can we do to deserve that blessing from you? You're so kind and so giving. But what can we do to deserve that blessing from you so we can be more useful in the world today? You both are doing so much, so much service to the people. And your hearts are so pure and blemishless. You are already in the path of truth. Continue your eternal journey. And Amma, special blessings for you. Uh, whenever you say, Ah, before Ma, I will be with you in your heart. <laughs> I will do whatever you wish. I will help you that. Whenever we say, ah, before Ma, you are already with us. Yes. <laughs> I love that. And Jody has one question about, you're asking your comment on Saraswati, goddess Saraswati. Could you say a little more to illuminate us about her importance? Saraswati, Sara. Yes, ye ara, Sara. Sara. Already that name is for all the babies in this country. Mm -hmm. The first letter Saraswati is Sara. Mm -hmm. Sara means essence. Sara means essence. Essence of life is Saraswati. What is the essence of life? Knowledge. Living, there is a big, uh, one, this is one of the question. What is the difference between animal and human being? Emotion? No. What is the di difference between the animal and the human being? Human being and animal, both there is, for both life is there. But any human being is very selflessly working. He is like God. If any human being is with all the time, with the selfishness, thinking only about himself, not helping anybody, not doing anything for anyone is below human level, that is the animal level. Mm. Did you get my point? Yes. So that's why, that is the difference. That is the difference for human being and the animal is good. We love animals, mm -hmm. I love animals, birds so much. Animals are gods, birds are gods, everything is God. But there is a diff long, lot of difference. If anyone is selfless, he is God. 
people love him like God. If anybody is very selfish, it's a below human level, come to the animal level. So the more we practice true selflessness, yeah. without desiring any attention, yes. not needing to have your name atto attached to it so that people recognize you, the more it's truly selfless. The truly more you selfless grow. people never expect people recognition. <laughs> Amma, I think that's the questions that we have. I would like to indulge you in two requests. At the very end, I'd like you to give us your blessing to be shared by anybody who sees this around the world. But before that, would you give us a final message to live by in these, in these challenging times when so many people want to draw closer to God, but even hearing your explanations, they're not sure they're doing the right thing. Could you give us a few words of support and guidance right now. Embodiment of Divine Souls, my most beloved sweet children, I love you totally from the bottom of my heart. So it doesn't matter what you believe. I'm here not to change your spiritual path, your spiritual orientation. Be in your faith. Love God in your faith. What all these years you are doing, absolutely correct. Go more in depth, have more intensity in your spiritual path, more love, true love, true devotion, not the show devotion, not 90% devotion, not 95% devotion, not 98% <laughs> devotion, not 99.9% .9 devotion. Have devotion 100% in your heart. Be sincere in your heart. Pray. Prayer is not asking or bothering something. Prayer is love. If you truly love God, I'm sure, without asking anything, everything, somebody is arranging everything for you. Whatever you are expecting, everything is in front of your door, in your home, in your life. That is God's love. Nobody is never going to love you more than God. Of course, your wife loves you so much, your children loves you so much, your friends and your relations and so many people loves you so, so much. But nobody is never going to love you more than God. God is boundless love, boundless compassion boundless kindness and these words are also not enough. Compassion, kindness, love, these words are not enough for God. Indefinable, unexplainable, non-jewel, absolute, independent and divinity all the time overflowing with imperishable love towards your heart. So love God. So that's why whenever you get time, if it is two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, love totally merge in that one minute, two minutes, five minutes in, in your uh, prayer with God. That is prayer. Prayer is not asking food and job, not, not like that. If you innocently ask that, no problem. You can ask God that. <laughs> but it is Prayer means love, gratitude. What God did for you all these years, just gratitude. Go to a prayer room with gratitude, what you get all these years, what God done for you all these years. Go and pray, just love. Prayer is love. That love is not, we discussed all about, already about that love. Love is a boundless love. There is no explanation about that love. So love all the people around you. Of course, there are some mistakes also, but you are praying God every day. I'm sure you are elevated so much more than people who have no opportunity to pray God. You are very elevated. So forgive, forget. Forgiveness is divinity. Revenge is, you know, it is not good. Forgive, love, serve the world, 
serve the people around you how much possible you have to serve and don't expect even a thanks don't expect anything from anybody and you have to say them thanks to give this mm-hmm. opportunity to serve them that is beautiful for real seekers i love you so much so bend your heart in front of the absolute consciousness humility humbleness this is so beautiful ornaments for real aspirants i love you so much thank you so much for listening me thank you ama and i'll take that as our final blessing it's been so wonderful to have this opportunity yet again i hope we have many more not just in this lifetime but in all the lifetimes you return to visit us and giggle and smile and love us as an avatar love you so much beautiful children i love you millions and millions of times billions and billions of times zillions and zillions of times <laughs> gazillions and gazillions of times countless gazillions of times i love you i have no other work in this world except your work i took this body only for your sake so i want to be like a subservient for my sweet children love you children and we love you in return and thank you we we misunderstood why i am my shoulders don't ask don't ask you we have to ask you know to think about somebody you are in right time with amma when baba slowly just physical baba where can baba go so that time thousand hands of amma in front of you so you need not worry for anything so that for right, couple of years before on boards constant i told to all the children uh, are you going to put i am going to put a party so what is the purpose of the going there mother i have some court problem i am going there a son don't ask her, papa for court problem i got i will take care of that i will i will solve that problem in front of say don't ask papa just go there see baba take blessings come back if you have you never get padams can don't worry about that also mentally you can do padams but that is enough no need to go and physically touch so give rest baba mm. pray mentally that is enough um, what baba did all these years for the world go there like a gratitude you did so much for billions of people say our gratitude that's it